I'm Angie Grise with the Resource Conservation District, and I'm here today with George McMenamin, who is an environmental consultant who specializes in the removal of invasive species, to talk about French broom removal. Hi, I'm George McMenamin. I'm an environmental consultant. One of my specialties is large-scale invasive plant management, and I'm here to discuss and show you some hand removal techniques for French broom. Here's a French broom plant. This one here is probably five, six years old. I've started to get it ready for the demonstration so it's laying down. If you notice, almost all the plants, broom plants, found in the North Santa Cruz County are French broom. Not Scotch broom, not Portuguese broom. They look a little different. So we're only going to be discussing French broom because it's like 99.9% .9 of it. The Sand Hills have some exceptions, but mostly in the North County it's this. If you notice, it has lots of leaves on it. Unlike Scotch broom and Portuguese broom, there's lots of green leaves all over it in groups of three. Leaflets, they're actually, they're not individual leaves, but they're all over it. The stem, when it's young and green, actually is involved in photosynthesis along with the leaves. So it, it creates nutrients from that. So this is what it'll look like. This is a moderate sized one, moderate growth mid-age this is the period of time when it creates the most seed is the middle age french broom normally lives for 12 to 15 years and gets old and it dies as it gets older it produces less seed less flower and it gets actually they'll be big but they'll actually be easier to pull out of the ground than the younger ones there's two schools of thought on working french broom the first one says don't disturb the soil any more than you have to the second one says disturb the soil create flushes of seed and deplete the seed bank as rapidly as possible. I prescribe the second method because I believe that if you do that for three or four years, you will see a huge reduction in the amount of plants that come up and a huge reduction in your costs and resource and labor involved in controlling it or eradicating it. The other method relies on 30 to 50 years of non-soil disturbance, which I don't see as realistic. With all control methods, attention should be paid to doing as little damage to the desirable plants that you have in the area as possible. Um, these plants, like native, the native blackberry found there, provide habitat for animals, food for animals, and also stabilize the soil and keep the soil erosion from occurring. Um, this is absolutely critical, particularly after a fire, when you want everything growing up that can help stabilize the soil and don't, won't form a monoculture you want that on the site. Timing can be critical on the removal of invasive plants, particularly something like French broom. For, with French broom, you prefer to have the soil wet, but not saturated. However, if you, if you have it, you want to work it in the summer or when the season's dry, you can also do that with the right tools. It's still workable. talk briefly about the tools you may need to pull French broom on a large scale or if you have other plants going around it. First is a pair of hand pruners. Any hand pruners will do. These are large ones. You don't need just larger ones. Then there's a pair of loppers. Loppers usually are better than a saw for French broom because French broom stems usually aren't thick enough to it takes longer to use a saw on. So a pair of loppers and then if you can get your hands on it a weed wrench or a similar tool like an uprooter. Weed wrenchers are no longer available in the, this exact configuration. They're now owned by the guy that sells the uprooter and he's changed them a little bit. You can go online and find the uprooter and purchase this tool. He's the only one that has the patent for it. It is by far and away the best of the woody stem removal tools. We'll be discussing three removal techniques, pulling, cutting, and girdling. Okay, here's a little patch of French broom. It's not, we're individual plants, so I can show you the techniques. When the ground's wet, if you want to pull them out and they're not that large, you just grab them and pull them out like that. It takes almost no effort at all. Anybody can do it. If you have any little outlier plants that are starting to move away from the, out of the area, pull them now because in a year from now, they're going to be large plants. Now, as you get into larger and larger ones, it can become more difficult to pull them. So what you do, the trick here is, well this one's going to come out easy. If you can't pull a French broom plant because it's too large, or it's just in soil, it's got too many roots from being previously cut or just the way it's growing, 
there are things you can do without using the weed wrench we showed you earlier. One is, first of all, if you grab the plant, because of the roots growing either straight down or in one direction, use either one direction you can pull the plant where it will come out of the ground. So first thing you can do is you can try to see if you can loosen it in any direction real quickly. And then you just pull and out it comes. So what I did is I loosened it in one direction and I pulled it in the other direction along with the direction of the roots and it slid right out of the ground. And this is a fairly good size one. Now say you have a plant that you want to pull out but there's too much stuff in the way so you can't push it in the four directions. One solution is cut off most of the plant and push it out of the way. Now you have a low enough base that you can work it. Good, this one's doing what it was hoping to do. Say this one proves, say it's still proving too difficult. Before you go and get the weed wrench, if you're working with another person, grab them. There's a very good chance two of you will be able to get it out of the ground. But in most cases, French broom will, will come out of the ground if you just work it the four directions and find the weed. This one may not still good. Okay, that's fine. So you've tried it by yourself, then you've tried to have someone help you. It's still too much for you. Then you break the weed wrench out. The reason you do that last is because that takes more time than the other ones do. So you go and you get your weed wrench and you put it around the French broom root and grip it. As you move back on it, it puts seven times the, the pressure that a human can go and rips it out of the ground. If you look, this is quite an extensive root system. This is the kind of roots you find in high nutrient um, dirt. You don't want to cut French broom if you can help it because this is what it does. Unless the cut is made below the root crown, it starts to re-sprout from the stump. Here's a stump that's two to three inches long and it's re-sprouting from it. Here's a couple more that are even clearer. Here's some plants that have been cut up a little higher. Anytime you cut French broom, unless you cut it below the root crown, it will re-sprout with even more branches and more flowers on it. And additionally, it will increase the number of roots it has underground, making it more difficult to remove. Cutting French broom above the root crown is usually not recommended, but if you decide that's what you're going to do, you have two options for doing it. One is cut it one to two feet above the ground and strip any branches off of it. It will re-sprout, but this allows you to see it and to, to treat it with other options later. The second one is to wait till the late summer, early fall, right before the rainy season and cut it, the plant at the ground level, as close to the root ground as you can get. This will result in some levels of die off, although some plants will still re-sprout. So here we have, say we have a French broom plant that's growing in rock or in areas where it's, the roots are growing into concrete or asphalt or against a house or something, and you can't, either can't get the French broom, the weed wrench in there, or you simply can't get it out with that. The last option you have is to girdle it at and below the root crown. The root crown is the point in the plant where the root vascular system meets the stem vascular system. You want to go to the root crown. The root crown is right at the top of the roots. That is where the different types of vascular systems meet and where all the nutrients and water flow. What you do is you take your knife all the way around, a knife or an ax or something, down to below the root crown, and you cut. Once you've cut it 360 degrees around to below the cambium layer to where you're looking at the wood itself, the plant will die. French broom does not re-sprout from roots, only from above the root crown. Like we saw over there, you saw those sprouts from the three inches? That's because they did it above the root crown. You've just learned some valuable tricks and tools for hand removal of French broom. If you'd like more detailed information or information on other methods of removal, please download our technical sheet.